Hey, it's Mr. E here, and our aim for this video is how do we simplify radical expressions when the index equals 3? So, as you recall from the previous video, we said that the index tells you what root you're in, the radicand is what is under the radical, and in today's video, we're going to deal with expressions when the index equals 3, or cubic roots. So today's video will deal with expressions that look like this. You so you know you're dealing with a cubic root because you see the index right over here is a 3. So that indicates that we're dealing with cubic roots. So we're not going to be dealing with square roots today, okay? Not in today's video, we're not. Okay, so what is a cubic root? A cubic root is a number that produces a specified quantity when it is raised to the third power. So for example, 3 is the cubic root of 27 because when raised to the third power, it produces 27. So you know, 3 times 3 times 3, that gives you 27. So three is, 3 is the cubic root of 27, it is said. So what would be the cubic root of 64? Um, let me show you how to do this on the calculator. So on your TI-83, there is a function uh, when you press math and you see the cubic root symbol here or you could just press the number, four. so you could either scroll down to it or just press 4. So we want the cubic root of 64, so we're going to press enter here and we're just going to type in 64. So the cubic root of 64 is equal to 4. And that's because 4 raised to the third power will give you 64. Okay? Um, what are the perfect cubes? Well, if we just go through each natural number and raise it to the third power, that's one way to derive the perfect cubes. So, for example, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. So, 1 is a perfect cube. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So, 8 is a perfect cube. And then, so on and so forth. You could just keep doing this and you'll get the perfect cubes. Okay, it says express the cubic root in simplest radical form. So the steps are very similar to simplifying square roots, except that now we are in cubic roots. So the cubic root of 72 we want to use the largest perfect cube to factor the radicand. So what's the largest perfect cube that goes into 72? Well, that would be 8. So we can use 8 to factor out the radicand. Let me bring that back. So let's use cubic root 8 to factor out the radicand and then cubic root 8 times cubic root 9, that should give us cubic root 72. So the first step is use the largest perfect cube to factor the radicand. Last step is just to simplify the perfect cube. So what was the cubic root of 8? It was 2. So we get 2 cubic root 9. All right, that became a 2. And you know, you can always check these by using your calculator. So you could type in cubic root 72. And that should be the same as 2 cubic root 9. And it is. Because it's just cubic root 72 in different form. Okay, example two. Express cubic root x to the seventh in simplest radical form. Okay, so 
cubic root x to the 7. So let's think of a different way that we could write this. And let's factor out the largest power that's divisible by 3 of the radicand. So remember with square roots we would factor out uh, the largest even number. Well now we're going to factor out, I'm sorry, the, the largest even power. Well now we're going to factor out the largest power that's divisible by 3. And you'll see why we do this in a second. So here, that would be 6. All right? So we're looking at this power here, and we're trying to factor out the largest power that's divisible by 3. So the options are 3 and 6, but we want to factor out the largest power. So we factor out 6. So x to the 6 times x to the 1, that's x to the 7. So this is just another way to write that. And we can just write it now as separate radicals. Okay, now, remember that rule we learned in the previous video? Let me see if I can pull it out here. Remember that rule? x to the mn is equal to the nth root of x to the m. Okay, we're going to use this rule to simplify this. So what this rule is telling us is that another way to write this here would be x to the 6 over 3, which is equal to what? x squared. So we can rewrite this as x squared. So we got x squared times cubic root x. And now we just simplify, so we get x squared cubic root x. That's our final answer. Okay, last example, example three. This looks tricky, doesn't it? So we want to express this in simplest radical form you'll see that it's not as tricky as it looks. All right, so to express this in simplest radical form, I want to rewrite this as separate radicals. So I'm going to take the original, and I'm just going to rewrite everything and separately. So I got 3y squared times cubic root 162 times cubic root x to the third times cubic root y to the tenth. It just makes things a little simpler. So rewrite as separate radicals. Okay, now I want to simplify each radical. So I got to simplify cubic root 162. I got to simplify cubic root x to the third. And I have to simplify cubic root y to the tenth. Now you. From example one, you learned how to simplify cubic root 162. We have to factor out the largest perfect cube of the radicand, and that would be cubic root 27. And then cubic root 27 times cubic root 6, that's what multiplies to 162. So the cubic root of 27 is 3, so we get 3 cubic root 6. That's how you simplify cubic root 162. If you still need help with this, look at example 1 in the video, of this current video. Okay, now, cubic root x to the third. So we can use this rule over here, x to the mn is equal to the cubic root of x to the m. So we're going to use this rule to simplify this radical here. So this could be rewritten as x to the 3 over 3. And that's just going to be equal to what? That's just going to be equal to x to the 1 or just x. Okay, now to simplify this, I'm going to use what we learned in example 2. So we have to factor out the largest power that's divisible by 3. 
So that would be y to the ninth. So you get cubic root y to the ninth times cubic root y. So this here could be rewritten as y to the 9 over 3, which is equal to y to the third. So we get y to the third cubic root y. Okay, so now what I want to do is join the radicals as a single radical and leave the coefficients outside. So everything that's under the radical, like that 6 and this y over here, I want to join that as a single radical. And I want to leave the coefficients outside. So the coefficients are 3x and y to the third. So when I do that, I get this. So I got 3x and y to the third outside. And I got cubic root 6 y here. Okay, now don't forget about the other coefficient. Remember the one we started with, 3y to the second power? Don't forget about that one. You got to bring that one down too. So you bring that down, you got 3y squared there. So now you just got to simplify. So 3 times 3, that's 9 y squared times y to the third is y to the fifth, so you get 9xy to the fifth cubic root 6y. That's your final answer. Okay, I hope this video helps. Take care. If you're still confused, you definitely want to rewind and take a look at the examples again. Make sure you clearly read the steps and you understand them. Write down any questions you may have. You can either write me a comment here on this website, or you can ask me when you see me in class. But make sure you have your questions ready. Okay, take care.